So file descriptors are a way by which the kernel identifies open files. Basically, whenever you open a file, whenever any program opens a file, there is a file descriptor that is pointing to that file. And kernel keeps list of all the open files. So basically, it's just a number. It's a positive integer used to identify open files. Let me just show you what I mean by that. Let me just open another SSH session. SSH. Okay. So let me open a text file using VI. Uh, I'll talk about VI really soon. For now, I'm just trying to explain what exactly this file descriptor mean. So now I have opened a new file called hello.txt. So we can use a command called ps aux pipe grep vi to see a process actually don't worry about this i am going to explain about each of these command like real soon for now let's just focus on file descriptors if i do this here we will get this is the process id again i'll talk about process id don't worry about it i'm just trying to show you this and do cat slash proc and this process id 978 and then ft so it's not cat it should be ls if i do that here ft stands for file descriptors and proc stands for process so this basically it means this is the this is all the file descriptors that are in use by this process if you look at here you can see zero is slash dev slash pts1 and one is slash dev slash pts1 and two is also the same and three is this file which i have it open here you know what does this zero one and two mean we know what three is we open that file so what is it what is this zero one and two so zero is the standard input and one is the standard output and two is standard error for every process in a linux system there is a standard input standard output and a standard error so if i do the command ls what we see here is standard output if i give some input into a command now that's called standard input for example the command read will read from the standard input what is standard error i'll show you what it means so if i do ls dash l now obviously it shows the current you know it shows the files in the current directory so if i do this you know ls dash l redirection list dot txt now what will happen so this everything will get written into list dot txt right yes that would be correct but now what happens if you do ls dash l foo remember there is no such file as foo and you do a redirection to this txt now what do you think is going to happen you know the error the error message will get written into that list txt file right wrong now it, it just showed the message saying cannot access no such file or directory but it did not get written into the file let's check that cat list txt there's nothing there why is that so what happened here is what we see here this is not standard output instead this is standard error here the standard output is empty that's why the file itself is empty here we are redirecting the standard output to this lost uh, you know to this list.txt which is empty and that's why this file itself is empty what if you wanted to redirect the standard error you can do that by using ls dash l foo then two what is this two so two is the file descriptor for standard error and if you do ls dash l foo two redirection list.txt we didn't see a message why is that because we have redirected the standard error into the file itself so if you do list.txt if you do cat list.txt you can see that error itself is there now remember if you do this with a space after the two and or a space between the two and the redirection 
then this is not going to work because that would mean you are asking to list the file foo and then the file two which will just give another message saying that you know no such file directory for foo and no such file no such file or directory for two so there should not be a space between them so now what if you wanted to redirect both standard output and standard input i know most of you might have seen this in so many commands or scripts you do something like this redirection list.txt and then you do two which is the file descriptor for standard error redirection ampersand one now what is ampersand one so ampersand one basically means you redirect the standard error into standard output so if you do that we did not see any message and we have the error message in the same file now what if there were no standard error and uh, now we were doing a list of a file that already exists ls dash l f2 which already exists and do redirection amazon one we still did not see any message because by using this we are telling the shell to redirect both standard error and standard output into this file so another interesting feature or useful feature is pipes so piping means it lets you chain commands before we talk about pipe let me introduce to another most used command i think this is like the most used command or one of the most used command in my bash history at least grep is used to find a pattern in text files this is how you use it cat now file.txt pipe grep then the pattern for example we have a file.txt here and we have two lines here so we do cat file.txt pipe grep two now it's going to display the line matching that pattern here who is the pattern and you know it displayed the line matching that pattern so here what we have done is we have now we used cat to display the content of this file into the standard output and then we redirected that standard output into the standard input of this file we don't really have to use it like this we can simply use it just using the command grep grep who and the file name file.txt which will also do the same thing but a lot of people actually use it like this and this is called cat abuse or useless use of cat uuoc because there is no reason to use the cat here i would suggest you get used to using it like this instead of having to use cat for every everything you can read about what all options that you can actually use grep with you know just read the man page man grep and you know you can read a lot of options for example here you know ignore case if you do grep dash i it's gonna match regardless of the case you can invert the match using dash v for example you want to see anything that does not have that pattern so if i do grep dash v foo and file.txt it's gonna display the line that does not have this pattern and if we look further dash r this is one of the most useful switches that grep has to offer this is one of the command that you will end up using a lot not just on servers also on your local system let me show you what exactly it does if you do grep dash r and the pattern and then the path you want to search it's gonna go and search each and every file for the for the pattern that you're looking for so here you can see that it found a pattern in the file file.txt you can use the r and n to display what line number it found the pattern here you can see it found the pattern on line number one of the file file.txt so next let's talk about file system hierarchy of linux everything in linux is a file 
remember that everything including devices like for example if you plug in a usb drive it's also a file according to linux and everything in linux or every file in linux belongs to a specific directory everything has their own place in the file system hierarchy of linux at the top of the hierarchy sits slash or root so this is what the beginning of the file system hierarchy looks like if we go back to our system and if we do cd to slash and you know if you do the pwd you can see that the current directory is slash and if we do an ls dash l we can see all the directories in there bin boot dev etc home you get the point now we are going to talk about these directories they are very important because it gives you an idea of when you want to look for a file you know where you should be looking for so the first one would be slash bin this is where all the user binaries or the most essential user binaries are present. Let's go to the slash bin directory and see what we have there. Okay, that's a lot of files. This directory contains a lot of the files or the commands that we actually use. For example, the command that we just used ls, it is a file. It is a binary file that specifically sits in this directory. We can actually see the ls file itself using the ls command. If you do ls dash l ls you can see that this is a binary we can actually you know use the ls dash h to see the file size or the human readable format and you can see this is a binary with 136 kilobyte if you try to open that you know it's in binary you can't actually read it but it's there so is cp or you know mb or all these commands are a binary somewhere present in this system most of them are actually present in bin so remember not all of them are actually binaries it could be a shell function but most of the time they are a binary and most of the time they sit in this slash bin directory and then we have slash boot now this is where the kernel and all the boot related uh, files reside if we go into the slash boot you can see we have the grub we have the init rd we have the vm liners which is the kernel itself actually i will give you an exercise here one would be how how linux boots and another would be about grub what does it do and uh, how the kernel is loaded so that's what the boot directory is another important directory is slash dev or devices this is where all the devices or like you know a cd drive or like if you mount a hard drive itself all of these devices actually comes in here if we go into slash dev and do ls you can see there's a lot of this uh, there are a lot of devices in here here you can see that stdr std and std out are also considered a device which is actually present in slash dev also here slash mem which is the actual memory the ram itself here you can see the cd rom and um, and here is another special file device special device called random i think you should read about it so let it be another exercise So read about dev random and dev zero and the other devices that here are SDA which is the actual hard drive itself SDA1, SDA2, SDA5 are the partitions in that hard drive. If we use the df command you can see that slash dev SDA1 is the primary partition of 11 gigabyte if you remember this is the drive that we allocated when we installed debian itself so that's what the slash dev is another important file or a device in dev is the null device so here is the null device so this is an interesting device so basically what it does is anything that you write into it is gone is disappeared it's like a black hole of linux whatever you write into this file is disappeared forever if i do echo hello world slash dev null 
it's it's gone it doesn't even print the output or what happens if i you know let me create a file we have the file here and what what happens if i move this file to downer it's gone there's nothing in slash dev now it's not a directory it's a device obviously there's nothing there so basically this file is gone forever so where do we use this dev null dev null is mostly used when if you want to discard any output for example if you are running a command that spits out a lot of random text or you, know, you don't want to keep all of this output and you just want to discard them you can simply use slash dev null to actually discard all the output 